Hello there, welcome back. My name's Rob Satchel. Um, today is still um, Saturday the 29th of November 2014. Um, I thought somebody suggested that I actually take a, a video clip from uh, a little bit of the forest. I wasn't going to bother with this because as you can see, um, you can't actually see much uh, absolutely fab scenery. Um, but um, trying to get a little bit of the atmosphere. Um, uh, what was I going to talk about? Uh, <laughs> I was going to talk a little bit about um, first aid and um, jungle, uh, you know, jungle first aid and all that, um, and how to deal with uh, snakes or snake bites, uh, scorpion stings, um, spider bites, and um, um, <laughs> yeah, like, this isn't rehearsed. Uh, snakes, spiders, scorpions, and. Uh, <laughs> whatever the other one was anyway um yeah the only uh basically i'll start off with scorpions uh the only ones that you'll ever hopefully maybe see uh and that's only with a guide are the big black scorpions with the slightly blue shell and to touch them they feel like um well it feels like a chinese plastic toy to be honest um but um uh, they're relatively harmless. Basically, the bigger the scorpion is, uh, the less harmful it is. It's uh, roughly equivalent to a bee sting, basically, back home. Unfortunately, yeah, some of you out there maybe uh, have different uh, <laughs> different um, body uh, build-ups and all that. And I know some people are have uh, extreme reactions to um, excuse me a minute uh, to bee stings and stuff. So it does depend on the person, but um, usually, oh, check this out. Usually you'll be all right. It's just the uh, it's the smaller, tiny little scorpions that you've got to be a little bit more concerned about. The translucent ones. Um, obviously, they're going to scurry away when they they see you anyway. They don't like it. And the only way that you'll possibly you probably won't see one unless obviously the guide finds one for you. But um, I'm just going to let our guide pass here. Um, uh, but they actually usually they. Uh, they make their little home underneath an old log and the only evidence that you'll see that they're, they're there is a little bit of um, uh, sort of granulated earth that they've dug out outside the entrance only about that big sort of thing uh, the entrance obviously they've got enough uh, um, uh, crabby elbow room to get in and out and stuff uh, snakes um, uh, again even treading like this like that they're going to hear you um, at least 100 meters away you know and they're going to get out of there most snakes well all snakes absolutely detest human contact uh, um like i say it's their it's their forest we're intruding and stuff um and they will get do their best to get out of your way or if it's like little green vipers you know those neon ones that you see on the the um, nature films um they'll just hang out in the tree but uh, unless you um stick your hand within half a meter or less of them they're not going to bite you uh, but the vipers are poisonous. They're one of, um, well, we're in Laos at the moment, but in Thailand, apparently they've got, I think it's about seven poisonous snakes. That don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, um, for, a, for a tour like this, we've got two guides at the moment, one back and one, well, I'm, there's supposed to be one behind me, but I'm uh, tail end Charlie today. Uh, um, but there's, yeah, on the smaller or the, smaller tours of uh, less than eight people. They usually just take one guide and he goes at the front. Obviously, he all, he gets all the uh, cobwebs in the face, so that's brilliant. Uh, if you are a little bit taller, because some of them are a little bit short over here, um, you you might have to look out for the, uh, the thicker uh, lines of, uh, I think, by the tunnel web spider. I think they leave a, and it's almost like cable. You can touch it and it's very strong. Um, but you'll see those spiders a mile off. They're literally that big. Um, but I don't think they're anything to worry about. I'm not sure if they're poisonous or not, but again, they'll, they'll still steer well clear of you. And if you get one in your in your tent, don't don't panic. They're not going to run for you or jump on you or anything. Uh, just uh, get out the tent and just uh, let it crawl out, or you know, try and uh, coax it out, sort of thing. Um, uh, so that's snakes. Um, obviously, yeah. Um, if you are worst case scenario, are bitten by a snake. Obviously, the uh, the the guides should have a first aid kit, but if they don't, um, I didn't bring my first aid kit on this journey. Uh, but you can get away with uh, to prolong uh, to give yourself a little bit more time. Uh, you can lightly wash the wound uh, with um, sort of soapy water to get most of the poison off. 
if it's bitten through clothing, remove that clothing unless it's, you know, uh, your bikini or something, and then just uh, uh, cut the section where the bite mark is because there's still going to be poison contained in that cloth. Very important to take that away. You don't want any more poison absorbing through the skin through that bite mark. Um, uh, yeah, and try and keep that as a sample if you can. But obviously you're going to be <laughs> just wanting to get to a hospital at that point or somebody that can help pretty quick. But like I say, you know, most most snakes will stay pretty far away from you and all that. Um, stings and stuff from like uh, hornets and other nasty little things like that. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, they, they're they not going to want to, you know, stay away from you like the other things. They, and if they do sting you, it will hurt. But um, uh, it's not, usually it's not life-threatening. Um, and when you take the stinger out, do not say this is it, don't pinch it and pull it out because you'll be pushing more of the poison in. What you've got to do is get a, a little card, plastic credit card or anything, and go, if, say, uh, the stinger went in that way, get the credit card and ease it and uh, sort of massage it out that way. Um, I hope you're getting this, because <laughs> there is no take two on this journey. Um, well, I'll just show you a little bit more of the jungle and see how much time I've got left. Okay. That's just been about seven minutes. I'm trying to keep these to like 15 minutes. Oh, I'm sweating like a cookie band for the coffee pot already. And we've only been like walking for an hour and stuff. Um, no, not even that. Cause <laughs> you saw me on the last uh, zip rope, uh, which the, yeah, the 500 meter one. That was only uh, yeah, 30 minutes ago, sort of. Um, so I think we're going to catch up. What have I I've covered? Uh, snake bites, scorpions. Spiders, yeah. Um, I completely forgot the other one. Uh, yeah, I'll think of it and I'll stick it in the next video anyway. But yeah, um, normally, obviously, uh, any of the jungles um, in this part of the world, Asia, uh, Laos, uh, Thailand or anything, all the national parks, uh, they will all, all by law require a, a guide or somebody to go with you on most of the trails, but not all of them. But to be honest, um, I mean, I can... <laughs> <laughs> I can get lost in my hometown, so uh, it's, it would be really easy for me to get lost. Obviously, this trail here is really easy to follow, uh, but there are crisscrossing trails around in the valley, so unless you uh, <laughs> have got a route plan or an actual trail map, you, you're pretty much going to be going around in circles and stuff. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, we're still, by the way, we're still on the given experience. This is all part of it, the trekking part of it. Um, uh, what I didn't mention is uh, yesterday we went to on the day one of the the three day uh, waterfall experience because they've got three different choices. Uh, the first one is the classic three day experience, three days, two nights, uh, and that will take you around uh, and you'll sleep in two different um, uh, um, uh, tree houses, <laughs> uh, and you'll get to on that one you'll get to actually see some gibbons on the one that we have were doing in the middle of uh, because we went further into the forest uh, or nearer the river um, apparently they're not so common there and you, we probably, I'll be extremely lucky if I see a gibbon uh, today or even on the last day tomorrow hiking back I don't look, you know, but I've seen, seen them already so I'm not too fussed uh, yesterday though, that, that waterfall that I think I got that was the first little zip, the, the little aerial runway that I used yesterday um, you'll probably see that, I'll, I'll maybe upload that as well just to, so you see how cool this area is um yeah obviously we're in Laos um uh oh yeah about um trekking through the wilderness um <clears throat> in certain areas read your guidebook uh certain areas uh, Lao apparently I thought I only had to worry about this in Cambodia uh with all the unexploded uh, ordnance that's uh, landmines and stuff that's in the ground and bombs uh but apparently I've heard uh, yesterday evening <laughs> whilst we were playing uh, a new card game which, fanta which was fantastic uh, called Bullshit I'll tell you about that later um, uh, um, yeah I heard that uh, Lao actually had um, more bombs and things dropped on it and shelled on it than uh, um, all of the bombs set off or launched in World War II put together from both sides landed just in, inside the borders of uh, Lao so uh, obviously most of them went off but the continual shelling there is still masses and masses of uh, um, ordnance just buried in the ground. Not landmines necessarily, but um, just unexploded bombs. 
so please do uh, keep to guided tracks or you know have a you know if you make going out to visit friends go with a friend that knows the area um, uh, that's about it for me now um, I'm gonna just give you a little bit more scenic stuff and uh, <laughs> not that you can see a lot of it from here but um yeah check these stairs out <laughs> yeah Righto, I think we're doing a bit of zip lining later, but I probably won't bother to uh, uh, record that, especially if the other videos turned out okay. I haven't seen them yet. Um, so I'm going to just hang on a second. Yeah, we've still got about three minutes. <laughs> um, and I need to do my shoelaces up. Yep. Uh, yeah, I hate to go on about it, but you know, trekking through any wilderness, uh, the most common thing of injury isn't getting bitten by a snake, it isn't falling off a cliff. Uh, it's basically tripping on something. My, watch your footfall, every not your your footfall, the uh, where you put your feet on every um, uh, on every path. How, even you know like this. Don't let that fool you into a, a false sense of security. There's there's tree roots everywhere here. You could easily go a perler on one of them. Um, uh, so yeah, like in any other wilderness, yeah, just watch watch where you're putting your feet. Um, and uh, yeah, just every now and again, look look at the trees above and, and stuff around, just to, just in case you, that you'll see some wildlife. It's kind of unlikely uh, uh, for us sort of visitors to actually spot anything. But yesterday I did see a centipede, uh, one of those, um, uh, it was about that big, um, and the centipedes are the poisonous ones. Um, it's the millipedes, the, the ones with more legs that look more bullet shaped. Those are the ones that aren't poisonous. Uh, but they look a bit more sort of uh, uh, like that you'd have them in a, in a horror movie or something. Um, but they're okay. Uh, so yeah, I think that's about it for me in the uh, <laughs> in the jungle. Everybody wants to call it the jungle and all that, but uh, it's basically just a forest that's a bit um, a bit tropical, really. Uh, uh, a fantastic place to spend three days. Um, oh, I didn't I didn't finish telling you about the uh, yeah. The other option is you can do. Um, uh, the third option is you can do, a, uh, if you haven't got as much time in Laos, you can do a two-day uh, sort of fast-track tour. Um, it doesn't take you down to this area where the waterfall is, so you won't be swimming in a waterfall, un unfortunately, or under one. Uh, it was a small waterfall, but very beautiful. Uh, and there's a, a big enough pool to dive and swim in uh, that's safe um, nearby. But as with any pool, go in feet first. Where you're going to dive into first in check with your legs dangling down all the way to where your your dive will finish. Uh, just don't don't be an idiot and just dive in because there uh, the water can be pretty murky here and you you know it could be just it only need the boulder only needs to be about a foot beneath the surface and you've you knock yourself out and then uh, you know if somebody else isn't a first aider in the group uh, you know you'll be cabbaged. So uh, yeah, be sensible. Anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave you guys in a minute and. Uh, yeah, I will see you uh, <laughs> probably in a few hours' time. Okie dokie. This is Rob Satchel saying goodbye for now. See you in a little bit. Bye. -bye.